Verse 5. And from the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had a human likeness. But each had four faces, and each of them had four wings. Their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like burnished bronze. Under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands. And the four had their faces and their wings thus. Their wings touched one another. Each one of them went straight forward without turning as they went. As for the likeness of their faces, each had a human face. The four had a face of a lion on the right side. The four had the face of an ox on the left side. The four had the face of an eagle. And parenthetically, behind. So the front is human. The back is an eagle. The left is an ox. And the right is a lion. We've done this before, but it's worth doing again. If you hold your place here and fast forward to Ezekiel 10, you see a description of the same thing. And if you read that, it's starting in 1014, each one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. The second face, the face of a man. The third face, the face of a lion. And the fourth face, the face of an eagle. Now, if you compare those four faces to the four faces that are listed in Ezekiel 1, you'll see a striking difference, the cherub and the ox. So in Ezekiel 1, the face is the face of an ox. The corresponding face in Ezekiel 10 is the face of a cherub. One can infer from this that the face of a cherub looks like the face of an ox, assuming he's looking at the same thing. Well, where does that take you? to the golden calf. One of the things that we've said about the golden calf is nobody had any doubt who Yehovah was. The problem was not Yehovah, the problem was Moses who was missing. Remember, Moses went up onto the mountain and they expected him back in 40 days and he was late. So they panicked and they said, we no longer have our guide. We're going to make one for ourselves. And what they do is they cast a golden calf. Aaron himself, who casts the golden calf, says, Here are your Elohim. Tomorrow we will have a sacrifice to Yehovah. So Aaron is not looking at this thing that they have cast as being a god itself. It is simply a conduit by which they can connect with God because the one who came with them, Moses, is not available. Now, God disapproved of this severely. And God came in in the form of Moses and straightened them out. But what I'm suggesting to you is that this vision of a calf is something that goes with the description of the cherub that you have here. This is not scripture, this is genealogy. So you may do with that whatever you want. All I'm doing is drawing connections for you.